They called him Black Moses because he would have led thousands of blacks back to their promised land, Africa. Because he preached black separatism and urged his people to return to their place of origin, he was often at odds with other black leaders and the white establishment. Garvey found his inspiration for African nationalism while traveling in Europe. In England, he sharpened his focus by reading Booker T. Washington's Up From Slavery. The book tells the inspirational tale of Washington's life from slavery in Virginia to the founding of Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. As he read, Garvey was drawn in. He said later, my doom, if I may call it, of being a race leader dawned on me. Now, sure of his destiny, Garvey went straight from England to his native Jamaica where he founded the Universal Negro Improvement Association, UNIA. Marcus Mosiah Garvey was born on August 17, 1887 in Jamaica's northern coast. As the privileged son of a tradesman and landowner, Marcus Garvey knew little of class boundaries or racism. His first lesson in prejudice came at 14, when the parents of a little white girl he played with ordered her never to see Garvey again. They called him nigger. At 18, Garvey moved to Kingston, Jamaica's capital, to work in his uncle's print shop. During his years in Kingston, Garvey became fully aware of the unfair racial divisions in Jamaican society. By his early 20s, he had become deeply immersed in political activities and efforts to improve the status of Jamaican blacks. Marcus believed he had a calling to help organize people, but he needed more experience of the world. In 1910, at the age of 23, he set out for Costa Rica. There, Garvey took a job on a banana plantation owned by the United Fruit Company. This giant United States firm controlled much of the fruit production in Latin America and was rapidly clearing land for new plantations. People worked long, hard hours for low wages in squalid King Costa Rica. Garvey traveled to Nicaragua, Colombia, Venezuela, and other Latin American nations. Everywhere he found black workers who had fled the poverty of one country to fond of suffering. He had traveled throughout the world and he had seen similar things and he noticed patterns and he thought that there needed to be a common answer to this, um, what he called uplifting of the race. So he set out to do this. Garvey was introduced to the idea of Pan-Africanism, the belief that blacks throughout the world are one people with Africa as their common home. The Pan-African movement was devoted to establishing African nations entirely governed by Africans. More and more, he came to accept the belief that blacks throughout the world must unite and wrest Africa from its colonial occupiers. In 1913, Marcus Garvey read a book that burned through to his soul. Up From Slavery was the autobiography of Booker T. Washington, the respected orator and educator. In the book, Washington, a former slave, urged blacks to improve themselves through education. The book posed many disturbing questions for Garvey. Where is the black man's government, his ambassador, his army? Garvey had found his purpose in life, to win these things for his people. Afire with this new vision, Garvey hurriedly returned to Jamaica and 17 days later formed the Universal Negro Improvement and Conservation Association, which came to be known as the UNIA. The UNIA's purpose was to unite Jamaica's black population through racial pride and a program of educational and economic opportunity. Furthermore, the UNIA vowed to work for the establishment of independent black rule nations in Africa. His first goal was to win the support of Jamaica's poor black workers by responding to their immediate needs. He 
decided to make a fundraising tour of the American South. With the hope that Booker T. Washington could help, Garvey wrote to him, only to learn that the man he so admired had died. Garvey traveled to New York instead, spending his free time on street corners, explaining his program for racial solidarity to anyone who would listen. He would go to a town and say, there are no black leaders in this town. All of, the, all of your ministers and all of your polit politicians uh, are not serving you well. And then he would call a meeting at a local church or a local hall. The fact that he had challenged every black leader in town meant that they would all be there. And it was at that point that he would then put across his program. Wherever he traveled, Garvey taught blacks to be proud of their blood, but he warned that they would only gain respect when they improved themselves. Blacks needed to unite for their own protection and obtain more education and free themselves from dependence on white employers. His printing expertise, Garvey began publishing Negro World, the internationally distributed UNIA newspaper. Negro World succeeded in carrying Garvey's message to the most remote areas of Africa. Up, you mighty race, became the rallying cry of the UNIA.